I'm pretty sure at the time we're recording this, there's actually still one Blockbuster left out there in the wild. Yeah, the last one. Hang in there, Blockbuster. You're doing great. Blockbuster is pretty much a punchline these days. It's often considered to be a relic of an archaic and more altogether more shitty era when you couldn't watch every episode of Friends in your underwear instantly on your phone. Now, since we're all on the internet, you probably know that Blockbuster were once offered the chance to buy Netflix and turn them down. However, you may not know just how far their corporate short-sightedness went and how much it ended up hurting the company and the brand. When did Blockbuster's short-sightedness begin? A lot of analysts point to 2003 as being the year where Blockbuster just began to make a series of increasingly baffling decisions that ended up tanking the entire company. So in 2003, they began to lose some money due to companies like Redbox and Netflix. However, they were still in a fairly good position from a business sense because they had something that neither Netflix or Redbox had, which was like decades of brand recognition, public goodwill and a blue logo. While profits were down for Blockbuster, as is wont to happen when a company sweeps in and steals half your fucking audience, the company was in a position to overtake and probably crush Netflix if they handled the situation correctly. What do you mean they could have crushed Netflix? You have to remember, at the time, Netflix was still offering like, you know, DVD rentals by post, and Blockbuster had copies of every DVD ever made, almost. So if they wanted to compete with Netflix on this front, they easily could have done so. Not to mention the fact they had like, you know, decades of brand recognition, like the kind of like pull necessary to score like, exclusive deals with publishers and movie distributors if they really wanted to. The problem is, they did neither of these things. So why didn't Blockbuster even try to enter the DVD postal market? This is where the corporate short-sightedness comes in. Blockbuster executives didn't think to enter that market or compete with Netflix on that front because they genuinely believed customers would stick with Blockbuster just because. Well, they thought the customers would be loyal to their brand. Yeah, because they'd, obviously they've done so for so many years. Why would they leave now? Did Blockbuster have a history of being nice when the other brands are being shit? No, because they were pretty much the only choice a lot of Americans and like, you know, Europeans had um, for that exact service for many, many years. Uh, yeah, Blockbuster just didn't see a difference between customers had no choice but to continue using our shitty service because it was really the only option they had and, oh, they love our company, they'll stick with us through thick and thin. Imagine this from like any other business's point of view, like imagine you're like Little Chef. Little Chef, people know Little Chef, it's a shitty fucking, does it even still go in anymore? I can't remember. Don't know. It was a shitty fucking restaurant chain that only existed on the sides of motorways. Imagine like the executive Little Chef going, yeah, customers love Little Chef. Like, and then obviously when McDonald's started going into service station stuff, the customers aren't going to go to McDonald's where it's cheaper and they can get like a big Coke and a burger for three quid. How would they miss the Little Chef experience like they have done for so many years, not realising the only reason they were so popular is they were literally the only choice people had. <laughs> the short-sightedness and the hubris is like, it's, it's, you can almost feel it, you can taste it, can't you? it's so up your own ass. Like, like the brazenness of a company to think, like, yeah, we were people's only choice for years. People aren't going to immediately just jump shit when they get offered, like, you know, an objectively better service. Do they know how fickle customers are? Did Blockbuster ever decide to actually offer DVDs by mail? They did. And then they decided to, you know, charge more than Netflix did. And to be fair, there were some features of the Blockbuster offer that were, like, you know, better than Netflix. For example, rather than having to return the DVDs by mail, you could drop them off in a Blockbuster store. Which obviously back in those days, there were thousands of those things dotted across the country. But only Blockbuster lets you exchange your movies instantly at any one of our stores. The problem was, um, as I said, they meant they charged more than Netflix for this service, and they offered a tiered service. And I believe like the top top tier, they eventually got rid of it after one customer bragged about like renting like a hundred DVDs in a month or something, and an executive went, "Yeah, we want to uh, in, you know curtail that sort of behaviour." That's not like, you know, we don't endorse customers doing that. Basically saying, we don't want customers to take advantage of this. Which obviously doesn't really work when you compare it to like, you know, Netflix's um, attitude of, I believe back in the day, they released a statement that said, do you mind if people share their Netflix account? Like, no, it's fine. Yeah. yeah, because that's how you do it. That's how you get good customer goodwill. Do you mind if people share their account? No, it's fine. Just don't use a VPN, apparently today. Carl, don't watch Parks and Rec. Fuck you, Netflix. <laughs> I watch Parks and Rec all I fucking want. <laughs> Isn't that a great move for a company, Brad? We have more money, more brand recognition, and the ability to undercut our competition. Let's charge more. 
and offer a worse service and then tell our customers to go and fuck themselves and they try and use the service to its full potential. What a great way to make profits. Well done, Blockbuster. I'm sure your one store is killing it. What's the matter? That old creepy place. I saw someone in the window there. Come on, let's get out of here. This evidently didn't work for Blockbuster, and as companies like Netflix gained more of their market share and Blockbuster saw their profits hemorrhaging and customers leaving left, right and centre, they began to get more and more desperate. What did they do? Uh, one of the first things they tried to do was get rid of late fees. These late fees were considered one of the most archaic and hated aspects of Blockbuster. No more late fees! No more late fees! And obviously when they scrapped late fees, that just saw them lose. I think the, um, the quarter after they scrapped late fees, they lost a, um, like 25% of the value of the company was just wiped off because that's how much money it made. And when investors saw they did that, they immediately jumped ship to somewhere else. <laughs> Do you wanna know my favorite part about them scrapping late fees? After they scrapped late fees, they brought in a new service for customers, you know, for their convenience, where if you forgot to take a DVD back to the store, what they do is they would charge you the full amount it was worth, you know, for your convenience. Wait, so they sold it to you? No, yeah, no, you owned it now. You obviously want to keep it. And Joe, if you took it back to the store, and you said, why have you charged me $20 for fucking Taken 2? They say, oh, we thought you wanted to keep it. Like, no, I don't. I want a refund. Here's your DVD back. I say, okay, we'll refund your money, but you will have to pay a couple of dollars for a restocking fee, which, as you may notice, isn't a late fee. It's not a late fee. It's a restocking fee. But here's the best part. I believe in several states in America, class action lawsuits were filed against Blockbuster for deceptive marketing practices, you know, for not disclosing the fact that we so basically all it said on their things are, we've scrapped late fees. And when you hear you scrap late fees, you say, oh, I won't get charged for returning it late. So I can return it like a week late and it won't matter. I might get like a snotty email saying I've still got it or I might rent anything else outside I return it. But other than that, everything's fine. When people say, oh wait, I'm gonna get charged the full price of a DVD if I don't return it straight away. What is this bullshit? And then get charged $2 to return it as a restocking fee. That's obviously just a late fee with more steps. Mm. And um, a Blockbuster executive, after the class action lawsuit succeeded and had to pay out millions to customers who like, felt they'd been duped by the practice, said, rather than scrap it, what we're going to do is just make it more clear what the terms are on the sign. <laughs> because obviously they couldn't scrap it because it made too much money. <laughs> and obviously the backlash to this is just more people signed up for Netflix. I believe Netflix did capitalise on it to a degree, announced that they never charge late fees and never charge like, you know, a restocking fee or anything like that. We saw it just stole more customers from Blockbuster, which forced them to adopt even shadier practices and do even more blatantly anti-consumer bullshit. And it reminds me a lot of um, Uber when they arrived in London and taxi drivers went on strike. And the result was an 800% increase in downloads of the Uber app. Because the idea, like, the way I heard someone put it was, imagine calling for a taxi that day. Oh yeah, I'd like to book a taxi to uh, Sharon Cross, please. Oh, oh no, sorry, we're not, we're, we're not on, no taxi drivers are on today, we're all on strike to protest Uber. What's Uber? Well, it's a taxi service. Oh, cool, thanks. Just, <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. I should also probably point out that a few years later, Blockbuster did reinstate late fees because they weren't making enough money. <laughs> of course they fucking did. So this didn't kill Blockbuster, there's got to be more. No, 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 it didn't kill Blockbuster. Of course, they made one last limping effort to bid at Netflix's heels. And in 2010, Blockbuster released an app that allowed you to watch the very latest movies. And how did they fuck this up? Well, they fucked it up by only allowing customers to download the movie first and only allowing them to watch it on their phone. Isn't that a great idea, Brad? How many times have you been sat in public and thought, wow, I'd really like to watch an episode of Friends in half an hour. Better download one. That's crap. <laughs> You're competing with Netflix, a service where the key selling point is stream anywhere on any device instantly. And they say, yeah, but how about, nah. How about, instead of doing that, you can only download it and watch it on your phone. I should probably point out as well, because this is great, Blockbuster tried to spin the fact you couldn't watch the films on anything other than your phone, you couldn't stream it to another device as a good thing. How could they possibly spin only being able to use it on one device as a good thing? Because the movies were specially encoded to be watched on phones, and therefore they were optimised quality-wise 
for phone screens, and it was a good thing that you couldn't stream them to other devices, which then you wouldn't have like you know the high level of quality you expect from movies offered by the blockbuster brand. You know, audience, because people watching fucking Star Wars on a two-inch phone screen care about the quality. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. No! I want to know what they were picturing people doing. Like someone sat on a train going, oh, fucking bored. <sighs> oh, I can, oh, I have the Blockbuster app. Duh. Oh cool, they have the latest Transformers movie. I can't wait to watch that in 45 minutes. Duh. But folks, as it often does with articles and videos like this, it gets just a little bit better because when an interviewer pointed out how bumfuck stupid this idea was to a Blockbuster executive and handily pointed out to them that like, the Blockbuster app sucked compared to Netflix, you know, given that Netflix would allow a customer to watch any film they wanted instantaneously on any device, the Blockbuster executive shrugged and said to them, well, if a customer wanted you know, more choice, they could always go to blockbuster.com, download the application, and download the film that way. <laughs> That's the actual answer they gave. When, they were, when it was pointed out to them, um, do you know that this app sucks ass, and with Netflix, I can literally watch the movie right now instantly, the Blockbuster executive's response was to go, well, you could always just do more things. <laughs> I should point out as well, if you downloaded the Blockbuster app on your computer and download the movie that way, you couldn't watch the film on your, on your computer, you had to transfer it to your phone. And that was their solution! That was, like, that was the guy's response to being it pointed out. Like, Netflix can do this instantly, what like, advantages does this app have over it? In, like, do you have anything to compete with Netflix? And they say, yeah, we can do it in more steps. <laughs> when the stunned interviewer asked the Blockbuster executive if they were doing anything as a company to make the service more streamlined for customers. That executive smiled with the same kind of look as someone wearing a top hat who's just being asked if they can perform any magic tricks. And lots of them said, ah, yes, we are. We've changed the text on the download button to the words, get it. And what else? They changed the words. Yeah, but I mean, what, what different function did it actually do? They changed the words, Brad. <laughs> so they, they made a, a new graphic, that's their developing... No, they graphic. developed the Get It button. Oh, I should probably explain what the Get It button does, shouldn't yeah. I? Oh, when you press the Get It button, um, you download the movie. So there is just a... There is just a... <laughs> <It's down. laughs> I can't give a straight face anymore. They renamed it. I genuinely thought you were, that there was something else there. No, 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 that's the thing. They, they, they renamed it the Get It button, but the Get It button just downloaded the movie. And when they are, I want to get the quote up because this is fucking brilliant, right? One sec. So I've now found the quote from the Blockbuster executive man, and we're going to do a little role play now, Brad. So I want you to put me into a corporate business setting, and you're going to play the role of the interview. I want you to ask me what the Get It button is, and I will play the role of the Blockbuster executive, and I will give the exact answer they gave that interviewer. So, Mr. Blockbuster executive man, you've said there is a new Get It button. Yes. What does it actually do? Well, the Get It button says, look, we're Blockbuster. We have every movie ever made. Our job is to get it to you. I believe that answers your questions, right? No! No, it does not. This is actually how this interview went down. <laughs> what a fucking moron! As a final testament to how little Blockbuster understood about the digital world, in that same interview, the same executive bragged about the fact that the new Blockbuster app will be bundled exclusively on Motorola phones that also blocked users from accessing Netflix. I think you too have shown us that customers fucking love it when you bundle shitty pieces of technology onto their phone they can't get rid of. Customers love that shit, don't they? Um, as you can probably imagine, this app didn't do all that well. I don't think we really need to talk about the ending to this story because you all know what it is. Blockbuster died and the world was a better place because of it. I'm off to stream literally anything I want. See you later, punchline. <laughs> This video has probably gone on a little bit longer than it should have done already, but um, as it's tradition, let's talk about something stupid at the end of the video. And Brad, I've had an idea. Imagine for a second if modern day Netflix, as it is now, was owned by Blockbuster. How different do you think the Netflix originals would be? I feel like Iron Fist wouldn't be that much different. <laughs> <laughs> 
I imagine obviously with how poor the business decision Blockbuster made throughout like the 2000s, I'm imagining that they would have still partnered with Marvel, but would have like gone into their back catalogue and picked the worst fucking characters. <laughs> like they would have picked like Daredevil, Luke Cage, the Defenders. They'd have gone in and gone, you know what? I bet we can do something with this like, you know, this character here. Stilt man. <laughs> Who's still man? He's a fucking shit tier hero from like Spider Man or some shit. He just wears stilts and that's it. But I imagine that they would have just gone with how bad their businesses were. Just pick the worst possible characters to adapt to the screen. Or like draw the really racist ones from back in the day. Let's make a TV show about the spot. Some fucking. Just scraping the bottom of the barrel for Litterbug and Dr. Bond. <laughs> You've heard the stories, but now experience the legend. Doorman 2019. <laughs> oh, fuck you, fuck you, Blockbuster.